Chess friends, today I am gonna teach you how to play against the E4 move if you are playing with black pieces, Super GM Stockfish is here to teach you chess traps and tricks in the opening which will boost your ELO ratings to the sky, are you ready? Before moving on, let me show you your today's chess puzzle, solve it and answer me in comments, let's see how many of you can solve this puzzle, white starts off with E4, you should play D5, similar to the Scandinavian defense, but the special move comes after that, in the main line, instead of capturing the pawn, which is common, you should move bishop g4, this is known as the Portuguese variation, this move comes from the Scandinavian defense, but it really stands on its own, I've used this line a lot. Especially in fast games, and it works well because black's next moves are simple yet forceful, for white, it's not obvious how to respond, typically, they might move pawn to f3 to challenge your bishop, or they could play bishop to e2, let's focus on pawn to f3 first, as it's white's more assertive option, white is targeting your bishop, forcing it to retreat, next, they aim to secure the pawn at d5 by playing c4, then, you move e6, seemingly inviting an exchange, however, there's a twist. When they take the pawn, you don't take it back right away. Instead, you continue with a gambit approach by moving knight c6, this move focuses on fast piece development and preparing to attack white, observe that black has three minor pieces active in the game, and the black bishop is also prepared to get involved, meanwhile, all of white's pieces remain in their starting positions, this situation highlights that black is well positioned to initiate an early attack and possibly conclude the game successfully. Now, let's move on to see what your next steps should be. White is likely to capture on f7, as it seems advantageous for them to gain material and expose your king, however, this move actually benefits black by aiding in development. With your king now on f7, your rook can readily advance to e8 in the future, bolstering your attack, let's look at white's possible moves, they often act to safeguard the d4 pawn, currently under threat from your knight and queen, white might advance the pawn or play bishop e3, we will explore both options shortly. Starting with bishop e2 to e3 for pawn protection, your subsequent moves are straightforward and logical, they're also easy to memorize as they involve simple development, you proceed with bishop before check, then after white protects their king, you move your rook to e8, as we touched on earlier, white's earlier pawn trade on f7 actually turned out to benefit black, now, your rook is highly active on the e-file, attacking and pinning white's bishop, this situation forces white to move their king. Because a move like queen d2 to defend the bishop wouldn't work, black can then deliver a powerful move, queen takes d4, taking advantage of the pinned bishop, and at this point, black is in a winning position, white is overwhelmed by multiple threats, if they opt to exchange queens, their bishop becomes vulnerable, you then threaten knight c2, putting immense pressure on white's position, leading to a likely win for you. We observed that queen d2 isn't effective, necessitating white to play king f2, this move protects the bishop and addresses the e-file pin, however, there exists a forced winning sequence that might not be apparent unless you know this line well, this obscurity is precisely why white players frequently succumb to this strategy, the attack begins with rook takes e3, tempting white's king to advance, yet, even after this, the best way to continue the assault isn't immediately obvious. The key move is bishop c2, a masterful play, this aims to divert the white queen away from defending the d4 pawn, and let me share a quote with you. Sometimes things that hurt you most, teach you the greatest lesson in life. If white takes the bishop, then you proceed with queen takes d4 check, and after rook e2, you bring your last piece into the fray with rook e8 check, this sequence puts the white king in a dire situation, facing an imminent checkmate, rewinding a bit, we see that the situation becomes unfavorable for white right after black plays bishop c2, white can't afford to take the bishop, as black would then seize the d4 pawn, but what if white plays queen d2? At first glance, bishop c2 might not seem to alter the situation much, however, it sets the stage for black's surprising next move, knight g4 check, which appears to sacrifice the knight without cause, yet, when white takes the knight, black plays queen g5, this move unveils the true intent behind the earlier actions, the move queen g5 not only targets the king but also threatens the queen, 
putting White's two most valuable pieces in jeopardy, following a move like king e2, black can play rook e8 check. Pushing the white king away, after that, black captures the queen, securing a significant advantage and setting up for a quick checkmate, now, let's revisit a crucial point in this variation, we've looked at white playing bishop e3 to guard the d4 pawn, yet, the more common approach for white is to advance the pawn, seemingly attacking your knight and appearing aggressive, however, this move is fundamentally flawed as it actually aids black in advancing and generating threats. With the pawn moved forward by white, your next target is knight c2 with your knight, threatening both the white king and rook, this leads to white's knight relocating to a3, an ineffective spot, just to cover c2, then, you advance your bishop to c5, targeting the fresh weak spots in white's defense. Your bishop at c5 becomes incredibly powerful, overseeing white's frailties. This not only potentially stops white from castling but also plays a crucial role in your attack strategy, white might opt for bishop e2, then, you play rook e8, showcasing black's dominance in this position, all black's pieces are in play, while white's pieces are practically immobile, white's knights are stuck, the bishop is restrained, and castling is not an option, white is essentially frozen, making it straightforward for you to continue and finalize your attack. And let me tell you a quote in Sutton. Life creates problems to see if you will fight through or quit. If white tries bishop g5, I'm curious to hear your thoughts, please share in the comments how you would advance as black in this scenario, before we delve into the last variation of the Portuguese gambit, I would like to inform you that I have two additional channels named AI Chess and Chess Lessons, in the YouTube. I share content related to AI-driven chess games and historical chess matches, if you're interested in enhancing your chess skills, I recommend exploring these channels, which you can access free of charge, both channels link are in the description. Now, let's get back to the Portuguese gambit, this gambit can be played when white opens with pawn to e4, you respond with pawn to d5, then knight f6, the typical response is pawn to d4 and then you surprise your opponents with bishop g4, we've looked at the move pawn to f3, which many players opt for, another frequent move, perhaps the most common, is bishop to e2, which isn't particularly threatening for black, after this, you simply exchange bishops and capture the pawn on d5, this move not only targets the pawn but also puts pressure on white's vulnerable g2 pawn, white will likely castle to safeguard it, next, you play knight to c6, securing a strong position, at this stage. Black is more active than white, an uncommon advantage when playing with the black pieces, you are also prepared for long castling, increasing the pressure on white's vulnerable d4 pawn, thus, white is already facing some difficulties, if white plays knight to c3, attacking your queen, you can simply move your queen to h5, adding pressure to white's position, in response, white will likely play knight g3, if white opts for a different move, like bishop e3, then you can castle long. And you'll notice that white's position becomes somewhat uncomfortable, though the position isn't dire yet, you're set to push e5, attacking the pawn and exploiting the pin. In some cases, placing the queen on h5 allows you to move the knight to g4 and target the h2 square, everything appears ideal. Rewinding a step, this is why white frequently moves knight to g3, instead of bishop e3, suggesting a queen exchange, and it's completely acceptable for you to swap queens, this leads to a completely balanced endgame with no issues, yet I'd advise being more assertive by playing queen g6. Even though both choices are balanced, queen g6 tends to create more issues for white, for instance, if white plays bishop e3 next, you can castle, and it becomes evident that white's position is somewhat awkward, although it's not a direct threat, you're ready to move e5, challenging the pawn and utilizing the pin, with the h-file open, you can push h5, h4, putting pressure on the knight and starting an assault on the king's side, white needs to be careful to prevent major issues. Even if the position is still playable and generally balanced, in practice, playing this as black is simpler, for instance, if white moves knight to c2, a common choice, you can advance pawn to e5, pressuring white's central pawn, should they defend it, you proceed with h5, initiating a side attack and threatening to push h4, and possibly h3, targeting the knight, as visible, 
White must exercise extreme caution to avoid a possible checkmate in the next few moves, this strategy is a potent tool for black. Potentially giving you many victories, I hope you enjoyed my content very well, don't forget to solve the puzzle answer and visit into my other channels, wish you all the best, subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.